टूडे वी आर आंसरिंग द क्वेश्चन डज मोर जीपीयू मीन मोर बेटर वी आर कंपेयरिंग टू फोर्टी एट गिग कार्ड अगेंस्ट ट्वेंटी फोर गिग कार्ड एडा दी आर टेक्स ए सिक्स थाउजेंड वन थर्टी नाइनटी एंड टू थर्टी नाइनटीज फॉर एल एल एम फाइन ट्यूनिंग बेंच मार्क्स आई सीन अ लॉट ऑफ बेंच मार्क्स फॉर जीपीज आई थिंक दिस इज वन ऑफ द फ्यू ऑफ नॉट दी ओनली फ्यू फॉर एल एल एम फाइन ट्यूनिंग सो दैट आई एम एक्साइटेड टू जम्प इन ऑल राइट सो दिस वीडियो विल बी स्प्लिट इन टू डिफरेंट पार्ट दी सेटअप द रिजल्ट एंड वील जस्ट टॉक अबाउट द रिजल्ट स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड विथ सम ऑब्जर्वेशन सम टेक अवेज and then some uh, finer observations or some meta learnings that i had with this and finally my my recommendations on which gpu should you possibly select from these four i think uh, that i ended up testing there are time stamps uh, the excel sheet i used is linked in the description feel free to jump around or just jump to the sheet with that let's jump into it all right so for the setup i'll talk about two things the how and the why let's start with the why there are many 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 benchmarks comparing every single graphic card in existence uh, but at least to my knowledge there's not a lot comparing fine tuning of llms nvidia claims that int4 is faster with every release they have more i don't even know what cores they call them now uh, but they keep they keep releasing more of those what does that really mean and how much of a speed up do we get All right, so that's the why. Uh, I hope that makes sense. I think at least in, to to my knowledge, this is one of the only benchmarks that compares fine tuning. Uh, Hamill did one on inferencing. Uh, please check that out. That's a really cool one. But I believe this is the only one on fine tuning. At least, at least to my knowledge. So let's jump into the how. So what I've done here is we're fine tuning the Zephyr seven billion model. uh and it's it's just on a dummy data set so the open assistant data set i have set the backbones to be in 4 in 8 and fp16 so like normally normal models ml models you're fine with using fp16 but for llms you really have to go to in 8 or even lower position sometimes in 4 uh to fit them in memory 7 billion happened to be the one that was fitting across all of these four gpu options so i just went with that for consistency i ran these experiments thrice uh there was not a lot of difference but i still did it anyways and then uh, i averaged their run time and that's the results we use i also did one just to compare their raw speeds where i set the batch size to 1 across all gpus just to compare their speeds against each other directly so we'll also talk about that later If you don't know NGC, it's pretty cool. It's this Docker container that NVIDIA ships. It's supposed to have the most optimized uh, builds, so you can find ones for PyTorch. You can find ones for all different options. I had used CUDA 11.8. I'm sure you'll get more speed ups with the later versions. I saw about five to seven percent of a difference. I know it get it might be better with the recent releases, but LLM Studio, the tool I used for fine tuning, uh, was the most stable on CUDA 11.8. so i used ngc uh, as the docker container inside of that i installed h2o llm studio which is running here right now if you don't know of llm studio is this no code or low code tool for fine tuning models large language models specifically and it makes your life really easy in the sense you can create experiments through this very nice gui and you can see i can set up one right here So I'll set up Zephyr seven billion, and it has all of the bells and whistles you'd care about. I can basically set the backbone just to this simple drop-down menu, and let's set it to int eight here. Disable gradient check pointing, and for all of my experiments, I did use flash attention too for more speed ups. Vary the batch size, and I believe the epochs were five all across these experiments. and that's that's all you need honestly at this point to kick the experiment off the nice thing here is i can also select which gpus i want to run this on so it's it's just a simple selection from a drop down menu and then when the once the experiments are off you also get this nice screen with an overview of all your experiments and all your runs uh it also has 
a cool way of comparing experiments some ml ops tools in there and i thought i'll never require that famous last words <laughs> but it's it's actually kind of cool in the sense that if you want to compare against experiments it has this really nice visualization um to compare the differences across two configs as well so when you've run a lot of experiments it's sort of easier to measure the times like so basically it's a very thought out tool and very easy way of fine tuning these models so i ran a lot of experiments in this my machine was busy for um i think a week an entirety of a week it was a loud week it was in very hot week in winters but this is the final sheet uh, that we got out of it so let's look at the results now let's look at the direct benchmark all right so here's the form uh, grouped by data type you can see the legend on the top right uh, if you want to compare it let's start from right to left so for fp16 23090s give you about a 51% speed up so that sort of answers the age old question does two gpus equal to x speed up you can see for yourself it's sort of not exactly true so you can see that in fp16 it's 50% faster in int8 it's 70% faster and in 4 it's 60% faster still not uh, a direct to x jump and remember this is specific to llm so your your mileage may vary right so for fp16 you can see that it's it's a pretty consistent flow the most gpu has the most performance the 6000 ada is sort of the fastest 2.5 times faster than a 3090 and you can see it has a much larger jump over the a6000 as well right uh, so that clearly shows that it has a lot more fp16 cores uh, it's it's a nice speed up there int 8 is not as consistent you can see 23090s are outperforming not just 1390 but also in a6000 so that's that's kind of really interesting right uh, the a6000 is slower by a very interesting margin and the 6000 ada is not insanely much faster than 2390 so you can see it's about like a 0.08 speed up compared to <laughs> 2390s so this was i would say the most interesting experiments and there are more interesting things when it comes to int 8 i'll just talk about them in a minute let's talk about int 4 again a consistent speed up graph i would say 6000 ada had the most significant jump here compared to all other gpus um 2.8 times as faster as a single 3090 and i'd say much faster than an a6000 as well So that was pretty cool to see. Um, if you look across just the 6000 ADA and A6000, it's a significant speed up every time. Even in Int 8, it's a significant jump. But the Int 8 story is a bit interesting. So we'll come back to it later. Let's take a look at the raw speeds. So if you look at this graph, what's going on here is um, instead of grouping. i've just plotted the raw speeds compared them against each other the baseline is a single 3090 basically the longest run which was a single 3090 for int 8 and you can see the speed ups there so 6000 ada is the fastest all across uh, the data types for sure but you can see that int 8 happens to be insanely slow for basically every single card out there you can see the 6000 ada has the highest jump for fp16 it's it's head and shoulders above everything else 23090s are also sort of a good margin but you can pause the video and take a look at this it's also worth pointing out that 23090s are almost very close to 6000 ada on in date performance so that's that's kind of interesting to see All right now for the final benchmark which i ran i'd set the same batch size which was one for every single gpu so this basically just compares the raw speed if you will it's a debatable benchmark but i still ran it anyways here are the results 23090s are the fastest in this case it's not doing justice to the larger cards the 48gb ones but i mean um 
it's kind of interesting to see that they're faster so but again this is where the observations become interesting it's also unfair as i said to the larger cards but it's cool to see that 3090s are sort of quite performant as well if you set the batch size to 1 um which ideally you never would but this is sort of comparing the raw speeds all right now for some meta observations int 8 has been the most interesting question of my life for the last few days let's take a look at this spreadsheet if you see like think about it right if you go from fp16 to int 8 to int 4 the batch size should consistently be able to increase because you're going from the highest precision to lower to lower that is not the case here at all i set these batch sizes to max uh, in multiples of two filling the memory out and you can see it is the lowest for int 8 and this is consistent across all gpus so i like i double checked and i triple checked this is what it is so for some reason int 8 consumes the most amount of memory on gpus and it is the slowest this is curious because most of us are fine tuning on int 8 precision right and i don't know uh, it it seems very interesting maybe it's it's different with the recent cuda release maybe there are more speed ups which could potentially be true but it's good to know that int 4 is faster than int 8 the second meta learning i assumed now let's say fp16 i would assume is the slowest int 8 should be faster int 4 would be the fastest that is not the case at all fp16 is the fastest then we have int 4 and then we have int 8 what <laughs> again if you look at if you look at the raw benchmarks comparison right you can see int 4 is sort of consistently above int 8 at least for the same gpu if you will so that is also interesting that fp16 is faster than int 4 is faster than int 8 int 8 seems to be weird for some reason so you already know that maybe the next gpu releases will have this a little faster and then some other observations i think most of you would know this but if you are fine tuning across two gpus the 3090 takes about 300 watts if you find you across to you would expect 600 but realistically it's 800 watts in power consumption or sometimes a little more because when you fine tune through multiple gpus there are for some reason more 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 power spikes my 3090s happen to be the blower style ones and let me tell you they are dumb louder than the quadro guards and that's that's a loud gpu to have the a6000 and 6000 adas don't even make any noise and this is sort of me leaning into my final recommendations for for which to buy if at all so you can see the 3090s are strong competitors but they eat more power they have less memory 24 compared to 48 and now they are harder to find so my recommendation would be go for an a6000 and if you have the money you could get a 6000 ada or maybe two a6000s quadro card is a good investment if you're looking at a 4090 there's a5500 i believe which is the same and cost the same but is thinner and the reason i suggest that is blower cards are very thin and you can stack them together the quadro ones require much less power so 4090 would require like 450 watts whereas the quadro part would require like 200 watts and finally you can clearly see with the newer generation there are more speed ups but then with a 13 billion it barely fits a uh, proper lino 48 gig card for fine tuning unless you use gradient accumulation or if you're using n4 so those are the things to know uh, those are the stakes again it's it's a very subjective question i would personally burn my savings and buy four 6000 adas if i could just because they are the fastest and i can't afford h100s and yeah thanks for watching